So let's look at another example of using ice tables to find the KC for a reaction. And in this case, when we do these types of problems, typically you are given some uh, initial values of some of the species, at least, and you are given the equilibrium value for at least one of the species. And from this equilibrium value, you are able to extrapolate the equilibrium concentrations of all the species involved in the equilibrium, and then from that, you can plug those concentrations into the equilibrium expression to find the KC for the reaction. So one of the first questions you want to ask yourself is what direction is this reaction going? So if I have non-zero values for all of these species involved in my equilibrium, I need to find a K, I mean a Q value. But in this case, because I have um, been not been given any information about O2, you can assume that the initial concentration of O2 is zero. And so I know already that the reaction must go in the direction to make O2 because I cannot have a zero concentration of any species involved in the equilibrium. So I know this reaction must go to the left. And then the next thing you want to do before you start plugging in values to your ice table, you want to set up kind of an X table here in terms of what's going on in the relative amounts of things uh, moving in this uh, reaction. So I know the reaction is going to the left, so here we're going to be using up SO3, we're going to be making O2, and we're going to be making SO2. So this is negative, and this is going to be a positive and a positive. And just a little trick, it gets really complicated when there is some stoichiometry involved in your reaction. I don't really ask myself about the information that I already have. I just set it up relative to the stoichiometry of the reaction. So I say um, for every two moles of SO3 that I use up, I make one mole of O2 and two moles of SO2. And that is related to X saying, if I use up two X of SO3, I make X of O2 and two X of SO2. And then I look at the information given in the reaction and I calculate X. And then from that, I find all the equilibrium concentrations. So here we go to the ice table, and I was given the initial concentration SO2 and SO3. And in the reaction, I'm told that the equilibrium concentration of SO3 is 1.0 molar, which means the change from initial to my equilibrium is a minus 1.0 molar. And then based off of my X uh, values, 1.0 uh, molar is equal to 2x. And then now that I understand or I can find out what x is, I can find all the other values. So here I started out initially with a zero concentration O2. I know that I'm making x of that. And so here, because 2x was 1.0 molar, I know that x must be 0.5 molar. So in the end, my equilibrium value for O2 is 0.5 um, molar. Here also I started with 1.5 molar SO2. I know I'm making 2x of that. So over here, uh, 2x was, or minus 2x was minus 1.0. So I know 2x must be plus 1.0. I know that I'm making SO2. So there's a positive number here. I started with 1.5 molar. I'm making 1.0 molar. So when I'm done, the equilibrium concentration is 2.5 molar. So then I go back to my reaction and I come up with the equilibrium expression. So it is products divided by reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. I always take a second to make sure that there is uh, no solids or liquids involved in my equilibrium because they don't make it to the equilibrium expression. So here, remember that uh, this two is this two in my equilibrium expression, and that two is that two. And now that I have all the equilibrium concentrations, literally all I do is plug it into my equilibrium expression, and I calculate my value for Kc. And as always, um, K values are unitless.